Okay, folks, uh, I've got my little saucer right here, and I've got a piece of thread, and I'm going to tease this thread apart with these toothpicks and spread them out. And as you can see, it's actually a circle, but I got him separated, right? Assume that's a piece of DNA. We're going to repack him like he would be inside a chromosome. Get him all into a bead. Okay? Like that. And there's the bead. Uh, that's not quite enough. So I'm going to hold him for a second. I'm going to show you something. We're going to take this guy and we're going to put him in a tube. And we're going to just spin the heck out of that tube. And by doing that, it's going to cause this thing to break in places because it's uh it's just really tearing it up this is not very it's a very fragile piece of thread so we're just going to just do this just this is what's happening as as the thing is run around in a centrifuge and uh, more than that but i'm not going to spend all day doing it so let's just see what happened to that nice little circle well guess what it all became fragments, didn't it? Look at that. You don't see a circle anymore. It's all torn up. Now, let me ask you a question. This is the law of ther thermodynamics. How easy would it be for these pieces to come back together to make the circle? Well, it would be virtually impossible to, to recreate. It's like breaking a glass, you know, and trying to put all the pieces back together. So here you got all these fragments. And then they separate out the fragments. And yes, if you do the DNA sequencing, you'll find that some of these match up, you know. And when they do, it's all linear because nobody's considered the fact that maybe it could go all the way around and make a circle. So here's, here's your linear chromosome right here, the linear DNA. You can take them all and match them up, yeah. You can make a linear molecule out of it. But that doesn't mean that's what it was to begin with. Mainstream science says each chromosome contains but a single continuous linear strand of DNA. If so, how can such a strand give rise to the massive and complex set of circles seen in this photomicrograph? Circular DNA the size of viral DNA can withstand the hydrodynamic shear associated with vortexing or spinning of DNA inside a tube. However, as the size of the circle increases, the DNA becomes much more susceptible to hydrodynamic shear. This is evident by the small size of DNA fragments left behind by shearing. Okay, this is a fairly complex uh, diagram I'm going to try to keep this as simple as, as I can. Uh, the microfuge tube that you see in the middle, in the upper, uh, upper part of the page, is where the, uh, the cells or nuclei, one or, the, one or the other, are put in there with some chemicals like phenol and other things. And um, the... Uh, it's it's stirred up. This this is actually vortex, and that just tears the any. Uh, it, it separates the DNA from other things like protein, and causes it to go into an aqueous layer, which is when you spin the tube. It uh, those two layers separate the um, the phenol and the aqueous, and there's a little intermediate layer where it can't make its mind up. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, let's look at the, the rectangles on the left. Those two highly schematic, they're supposed to be uh, DNA uh, circles, two circles that are joined together. We're not going to talk about uh, what joins them. And then on the right side, those two circles have fused together. And um, we're not going to talk about what that's all about. All of that is explained in the evolution blog. And then when you put, when they separate out and you stir them up, these things are going to break up, both of them. And if you go straight down, 
you'll see that they fragment into various things. Now the connecting points between the two circles remain together and they may be intimately associated with both uh, covalently bonded RNA and some proteins. So they may wind up in that intermediate layer because they may have proteins associated with them. And uh, something similar to what's going on on the right-hand side. So you've got, uh, if you go down to the bottom, you'll see that the... Uh, the fragmented DNA will be in the aqueous layer, which is the yellow layer, and then it'll be in fragments. And then the uh, more complicated structures will probably be either in the intermediate or maybe even in the phenol uh, stage because of possible protein associations. But whether they're in the phenol, whether they can be extracted along with the DNA is 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 irrelevant because there's no way you're going to be able to uh, PCR those things, amplify them like you would all the other DNA uh, because they're, they're not, their structures are not uh, conducive to amplification. Therefore, you will never see them uh, in a DNA sequence.